Let's talk about now how to, first of all, tell whether a matrix is diagonalizable, and then, if it is diagonalizable, how to actually find the way that, it diag that you can diagonalize it. I mentioned in the last video that for the most part, what we're going to do is just try to diagonalize it, try to find a basis of eigenvectors, if we find one, we found how to diagonalize it. If in that process we find that we can't create a basis of eigenvectors, then we know that we can't diagonalize it. So let's take a look at this matrix here. So first of all, let's find the eigenvalues. So we know we're taking the determinant of 5 minus lambda, negative 2, to 1 minus lambda. That would be 5 minus lambda times 1 minus lambda minus a negative 4. So I'm going to have lambda squared minus 6 lambda plus 5 plus 4 is lambda squared minus 6 lambda plus 9 which factors as lambda minus 3 squared. So there's only one eigenvalue, that's 3. Now, one of the things we mentioned along the way in terms of eigenvalues is that if all the eigenvalues was distinct, then we had a basis of eigenvectors. But now, because we got a single eigenvalue of multiplicity 2, it may or may not be possible to find a basis of eigenvectors. That being said, actually with a 2 by 2 matrix, well, I guess technically it is possible. It's just really rare to be able to find the basis when there's a repeated eigenvalue. But in this case, it's easy enough to check. So I go to this matrix here, and I plug in my lambda equals 3, so I've got 2, negative 2, 2, negative 2. Certainly if I put that into reduced row echelon form, it doesn't take much to see. It would be 1, negative 1, 0, 0. And so the only solutions there are when x1 minus x2 equals 0 or x1 equals x2. So we only get one type of eigenvalue, or eigenvector. We get anything which is a constant times 1, 1. And because we don't have two linearly independent eigenvectors, we can't create a basis. So right away, this matrix is not diagonalizable. We couldn't find a basis of eigenvectors, so it's not diagonalizable. I thought about doing just a 2x2 two two that, that was diagonalizable, but then decided that was a little bit too easy, a little bit too trivial. So let's jump immediately into a 3x3. Three Now, doing a 3x3 three three is certainly a lot more work, and I'm going to skip a couple of the steps and leave them for you to figure out when they get a little bit tedious to do here in a video. So the first thing is, I want to find my characteristic polynomial. So I'm going to take a minus lambda i is going to give me a negative lambda there, negative 4, negative 6, negative 1, 0 minus lambda, and then 5 minus lambda. And this is one of the things that I think I'm going to just skip over. I'm not going to go ahead and work out the whole determinant there. You should know how to do that. And if we do, we get the characteristic polynomial of negative lambda cubed plus 5 lambda squared minus 8 lambda plus 4. Okay, so we've got to find the zeros of this polynomial. And we know that if they're nice, 
then they're going to be a factor of 4 over a factor of 1, plus or minus that. So I'm just going to start plugging stuff in, starting with the easiest one. The easiest number to plug in there would be 1. That would give me negative 1 plus 5 minus 8 plus 4. Oh, hey, positive 9 minus 9 gives me 0. And there we go. So 1 is an eigenvalue. I could continue guessing, but actually you can never find them exactly doing that way for this particular one. Because just guessing never tells you what the multiplicity is. Let's go ahead now. Since I know lambda equals 1, that must mean that lambda minus 1 is a factor. And so I'll divide this polynomial by lambda minus 1. The easiest way to do that is with synthetic division. So I'll put my coefficients across the top. The opposite sign of this thing goes in the box, which turns out to be the same as what the eigenvalue is. Bring the first number straight down. Multiply by what's in the box. Add. Multiply by what's in the box. Add. Multiply by what's in the box. Add. So this says that this thing factors as lambda minus 1 times negative lambda squared plus 4 lambda minus 4. I never like having my leading coefficient be negative, so let's go ahead and just factor out a negative 1. That'll leave lambda squared minus 4 lambda plus 4. which factors as lambda minus 2 squared. So, similar to the last one, we don't have three distinct eigenvalues. We only have two eigenvalues, 1 and 2. That means we're not guaranteed to be able to do this, but there is still a possibility that we can. Once again, trying to skip over some of the details here. The lambda equals 1 is very straightforward. If lambda equals 1, we get an eigenvector, which is any constant times uh, let's see if I make one that and again I'll let you go ahead and verify that that actually works well let's do the more interesting one let's do the one where lambda equals 2 let's actually do that one out So if I put that in, I get the matrix negative 2, negative 4, negative 6, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, and 1, 2, 3. Well, it doesn't take much to see that all those rows are linear or constant multiples of each other. So the matrix reduces to 1, 2, 3. And there's only a single equation, x1 plus 2x2 plus 3x3 equals 0. That means that x2 and x3 are both three variables. So we can say that my eigenvector here is of the form 
x2 and x3 are free and that would make x1 negative 2x2 minus 3x3 but that means that we have a constant times negative 2 1 0 another constant times negative 3 0 1 which means we actually have two distinct eigenvectors for that eigenvalue. We actually have found three different linearly independent eigenvectors for this thing. So now, going back to our whole idea about this, the diagonal of D are the eigenvalues of A, and the columns of P are the associated eigenvectors. So, putting that together, I can say my D matrix is, I've got a 1, a 2, and a 2, because the 2 had multiplicity 2, zeros everywhere else. And my P matrix has the columns that correspond to the eigenvectors of those eigenvalues. The corresponding to 1, we have the negative 2, negative 1, 1. Corresponding to the 2, I had these two. I had a negative 2, 1, 0, and a negative 3, 0, 1. This video is getting really long, so I want to wrap up. Now, what we really should do to check that we did this right is check that A is PDP inverse. But to be honest, it's usually not done that way. Instead, just like we started the last video, what we can do is say AP equals PD, do those two calculations, and check it that way. And again, this video is getting long. I'll leave that for you to do to check.